okay? We left off on page Zion. And this I mentioned yesterday, Gemara in Brochus. Chain also lishon be misoch lemayrek mishto, imo. That a person should not set his bed from east to west if he's together with his wife. It means cohabitation. Nochen lizorif, afil chen mishto imo. And it, one should, it's proper to be careful of this, even if one's not. It's not a question of cohabitation. It's just not respectful. Right, Where is this? Rosha because uh, what's wrong with sleeping? You're sleeping from the east to west. What's so terrible? <laughs> there's nothing to be ashamed. I mean, there's nothing disrespectful. So he says that's only a person sleeping naked. Because again, it's not appropriate. And it's not where it's a canopy bed where it's you have this enclosure. You know, they only used to have enclosures the bed okay I mean I don't think anybody anybody's careful you know how you set the bed up and so, you know they're just they're, they're how the room is the, the bedroom is built that's the way you set it the bedroom set the bedroom no but you, you don't you don't have to sleep naked you can't go to the mikvah in, in, in a wetsuit you understand Firstly, a person is not covered. Evidently, naked doesn't mean naked where you're covered, because then he's not naked. He, what's the difference? You're wearing clothing or you're covered with a cover. So naked means a person's a little naked. Rav Moshe has a tshuva. Let's say, it, it, you know, people with head air conditioning. It, it, it's hot in the, in the summer. Is a person permitted? Is, is that a lack of tznius, lack of modesty? I think he, he writes that's not a lack of modesty. It's no different than you're in a bathhouse. You know, bathhouse, you don't expect it, but you have the outer room, then you have the inner room. You have the three rooms, the outer room, the center room, and you have the inner room where you, you, you immerse yourself in the bathhouse, where you bathe. So when you go to the second room, although you're not bathing there, you dress, undress in the outer room. You enter the outer, undress in the center room, then you go into the uh, bathing area. Because, again, so even though you're not bathing, but you're ready, you're undressed. Because th that's, the way, that's the way you conduct yourself. So let's say it's, it's impossible, the heat is impossible. It's not, it's not a breach of modesty because you have no choice. The Shekhinah, the Shekhinah, yeah. It has nothing to do with Shushalayim. It says the, the West is the Shekhinah. Hamatol Maim in Atzof Mulefnim person who urinates. Before we said in terms of this, that's only for defecation. For urination, you're permitted. Remember we said earlier, if you, we said if you're in an open area, the halacha, the previous halacha, right? So we said that's only for defecation. For urination, it's okay. What about if a person is within the proximity of Yerushalayim? We could see the Mokham HaMikdosh. You're in Harat Sofim. So if from there, you could actually gaze down and you could see, and you're urinating in that direction. Is that appropriate? You know, urination is not the equivalent of defecation, but even that, if visually you're in a position, you're able to see that location, that's how close you are, even urination is considered inappropriate in that direction. Beyond that point, you can't see. Lo yeshi ponov klapi hakodesh. 
lo yeshev upon of klapi akorish elo l'tzopan l'dorom o yisale kakorish l'tzdodim. See what it means, lo yeshev. Seems to be lo yeshev upon of klapi akorish. You're not here with the Yeshua means you're not permitted to sit. Sit where you're sitting when you're seeing it. This came up on Simple Story and there was a whole discussion. When they're holding the Sifri Torah, uh, when the Safe Torah is out of its location, you're not permitted to sit in its presence. Right? So, what about when they're doing that caucus? People want to sit. So, are you permitted to sit? You're not permitted to sit. So, they bring a, a, a proof of a Gordon Ervin that they had once forgotten. Uh, to make the Eruv, and um, they had to bring the safe door from the, from, a ha- from the house to the shul. So how do you transport it? You don't have you don't have a lechita, right? You don't have the partitions. It says they made partitions with people, and they went. They brought safe between the people. They had two rows of people from the house to the shul, and the people kept moving. Even though they didn't, and because the Torah was contained within the lechita of the people, that was within the lechita. So they, they rely on this for simple stuff. When you make hak- very often hakobis, if you have a submission that mountain of the people, usually the safe Torah is not on the outer circle, it's in the inner circle. So they're encircled with people. So even the, so because they're encircled with people, therefore you're permitted to sit. Because you're sitting on the outside, you're not sitting on the inside. That's what they rely on. Okay? And the people could be a mechitza. That, that's what they rely on, why you could sit. But sometimes you find, you know, straight people, all of a sudden, you know, first they say, Torah, he's wandering around with the safe Torah. You know, you want you know, just want you well. If the person is totally inappropriate, the person's holding sefer Torah and he's having conversations, talking about nonsense while he's holding sefer Torah. You know, if a person goes hagba, so from the time from hagba till they put it back doesn't take that long. But here is you know, first time sefer Torah, let's say for 15 minutes. All of a sudden, he, he gets into a conversation with a friend of his. I mean, is it appropriate? What are you talking about? So you're holding the Torah. We're not speaking. The Torah is there, and you're here. You're holding it, and the person's in the conversation. A nonsensical conversation, and sometimes I can't contain myself. There was this young Hasidic young married, and when you have two sefer Torah yomtiv, so sometimes by the Hasidim, they don't keep it. They don't sit behind the on the, on the on by the bimo. They take it to the seat to sefer Torah, which itself is a problem, because till they get there, people already sit down. They're sitting, and so when he's walking over to see, people are sitting, and they don't get up. They don't get up for the sefer Torah. When you have it on the bima, the moment he could, he sits down immediately. So if he sits down, everybody's permitted to sit. But till he gets over to a seat, you know, other people are ready. They're sitting. Okay, so, but that that doesn't bother me so much. But then he sits and he talks while he's holding the Torah. He's having conversation. Let's say even during Kriya Torah he doesn't speak. But being Gavra, the Gavra, he talks between the Aliyahs. What are you talking about? You speaking the Torah? Speaking the Torah is one thing. But what are you talking about? You're talking nonsense. I said to them, I said to them, I said, what do you hold the Torah? You know, it's a disgrace. You want to hold it? Keep quiet. You don't want to, you, you want to talk? Go get the safe Torah someone else. It's disgraceful. But on Simcha's Torah, this is something very, very prevalent. That if a person, if he's dancing, he can't speak, you know, while he's holding the safe Torah. But if he goes and he waits on the side with it, just waiting until that cover ten, very often he's, he's not just, just holding the remaining silent. He engages in the conversation. The Chabad Chaim writes later, he brings from the Yudah Chosid, that the reason why you find shuls, both the Knesset are destroyed, uh, and you find a burnt, is because people don't have proper decorum in the shul. Because if people would have proper decorum in the shul, I, mean, I, I said decorum, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking. Peep. He brings from Yudah Chosid, no. The Yudah Chosid. That's the reason why shuls are burnt down and shuls are destroyed by the government because they don't have proper decorum in the shul. But if they, you would treat the shul with proper decorum, mm-hmm. there'd be a shmira, the shul would never, never be destroyed. That's what he brings. You find by the Svartim, the shuls, they, when they build a shul, the shul is not any less uh, luxurious than their homes. You know, Ashkenazim, we have a shul in a basement, you know what I mean? In an attic, in a, in a, in a carriage house, you know what I mean? The only thing that's missing is the horse. <laughs> in the carriage house. That's the only thing that's missing. 
So that's where you have a shul. Your house is who knows what. Best architect, interior design, everything under the sun. Comes to the shul, you know what I mean? We'll get some kind of, you know, guy without a permit, he'll do the construction. No. So with all due respect, but as far as it's not that way. No. The fabric, the wood, the, the, the everything. Everything is first, first class. They, they also, they behave themselves in shul. They all daven, they chant, you know, they have, they have a whole different way of conducting themselves in a shul. Didn't register. Didn't register. What? No, no. So no. Okay, just pointing it out. Something we have to be aware of. Like I always say, there's two things. There's Yiddish guy, there's Menschlich guy. There's two things. Guy talks in shul, disturbs somebody else. You know, forget about Yiddish guy. Where's your Menschlich guy? If you want to talk, go in the hall and talk. Where do you have a right to disturb someone else? The person wants to daven. Well, if you want daven, let me go somewhere else. You know, I come here to socialize once a week, okay? So where's the Menschlich guy? Be in the middle of a meeting, you know, somebody would would have a conversation. You'd, you'd be upset. I haven't been in a movie theater in a very long time, since the 50s, or whatever it is. Exodus. It's true. It's the last movie I saw. Exodus is the last movie I saw. Exodus was, I suppose we paid 45 cents to get in. Okay, yeah, it was. David, David. It's better not to speak. Because people won't know otherwise. But Moshe has a chupa. Years ago. No, 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 years ago. This is, if you went up to the country in the Catskills, you had a shul of Woodridge and a shul. When the shuls, they only functioned in the, in, the, in the winter. They had a skeleton crew over there. So they would have, and it was based on Ramosha's psak with the rabbi, they'd have to announce pages. Now, how do you announce? Ramosha hold, hold, it was, it was a hepsic. You weren't, the rabbi wasn't permitted to announce the pages. Or well, any, anybody wasn't permitted to have. So he said they should have a thing on the wall and if people want to know, they keep moving the, you know, the numbers. So you should know the, the, the page number in the sitter. So you went to, you'd, you'd go to a, uh, whatever it is, in uh, Harrisburg. Rabbi Silver's son had it. His name was Rabbi David Silver. He had a shul in Harrisburg. He had this thing on the wall. You used to go to these out-of-town communities, and you would see it. That was based on Ramosh's Psaac, that you shouldn't, you shouldn't speak. It. Yeah. They yeah. because, because you can't eat the bread. You can't eat the bread without the salt. Well, you don't have a knife to cut the bread. So you say, tear it with your hands. No, you, don't, you don't tear it with your hands that, because that's a necessity. No, no, no. no. That's the first one. You announced that's before. That's before. Here yeah, we're talking about the middle when you're not supposed to, it's not permitted to speak here, so you're speaking. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. But that's even kaddish. You mean, you mean you have to shop between Gaul and Israel and 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 in the morning? You're not on any surface. You're not permitted to speak. Yeah, okay, that's okay. You could speak after kaddish. That's not a hepsic. 
if you if you really should start Shmona Esrei immediately. But the reason why you're delaying is because you want people to know what. what that's uh, that's fine. That's not a problem. But it comes like Myrif, where you don't speak between uh, the, the you know the middle of Bichus Krishma. It's like between the night is not as serious as the morning because you can go all yourself in Shmona Esrei. In the morning, you never speak. If Gol Yisrael comes, you start Shmona Esrei immediately. You know, you can, you, you bang. I guess so. Right? Before you start Yotzer, before you start Yotzer of Arachoshev, before you start Birchus Kriyashma, after Baruch Hu. Yeah. After Baruch Hu. Before Baruch Hu also would be okay. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Well, that's the no, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It's not all speaking. Speaking is just speaking. Correct. Okay. Let's get back to Hilfus Chuba.